In our last video, we covered doing Django REST framework. We created an API so that we could work with our React application. In this video, we're gonna actually start using our API in our React app. First thing that we need to do is we need to install a couple of NPM dependencies. So we're going to install Axios, which is a promised-based request library. Kind of think of uh, the Python requests. And we're also going to install Redux Thunk, which is a middleware for doing our uh, interaction with our API and with Redux. And I'll explain more about that as we move on. So now that that's installed, we're actually gonna jump into our project and edit our index.js file. We're first gonna do a couple of imports. We're going to import Axios from Axios. We're going to import apply middleware from Redux because that's what we're gonna use for Thunk. And we'll do import Thunk from Thunk. So with that out of the way, let's jump down to our store where we're creating our store for our application to use. And we're going to add a third parameter of apply middleware. We're gonna call it and use thunk. This is going to add the bits and pieces that we need for us to interact more directly with Redux and kind of manipulate how it does stuff. And we're gonna use thunk in order to do that. So let's jump up to our action creators because in order to do stuff with data, we need an action creator. So we're gonna create a new one called all to do's and we're gonna start off by making an API request. So we're gonna re request our API slash to do's and it's going to return back a result. Now before we jump into the rest of the code, let me explain what's gonna happen. It's going to make a request, it's going to return that data, and the request variable in here is set to a promise, which is a JavaScript thing that says, hey, once you get done doing stuff, we're gonna call a then function and you can do what's in this callback over here. So it's saying, hey, I'm promising you that I'm going to return something. Once that thing is returned, then you can do something else. In this case, we're going to return a function call that calls a function for doing a dispatch. Now, really what all this does is it calls a dispatch function that passes in a JavaScript object similar to the remove to do above, where it says type equals remove to do. In our case, we're going to send a JavaScript object says type of all to do's. It's going to send data from our request that we just made from our API and pass that through our Redux system so that when we get to our action reducers, the action reducer says, hey, I have data and I'm using this type of action and from there I need to do X, Y, and Z with it. The reason I didn't want to show the code is because as you can see, now that we're typing it out, it is kind of syntax, ES6 syntax heavy. But all it's really doing at the end of the day is calling this dispatch function and sending our JavaScript object so that the rest of the system knows what to do. I really recommend that you kind of copy and paste this code uh, from the show notes into the online on the Babel website and see what's doing. It's actually, it's actually kind of cool. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and keep going so that we can get a better feel for what this ended up resulting in doing. We need to add our new action creator to our bind action creators. Then we need to uh, replace a bunch of text because in our API we changed um, text to title and so we need to change the three instances of text to title. So if we'll do that real quick, that makes it easy. And then now we're ready to do something with our data. If we'll jump to our action reducers, we'll add an else if and we'll do action.type equals all to do's. And they'll just simply return our action dot to do's. So basically what's happening is we're getting our state of information from the API uh, directly. And so we just need to return that and it'll populate our state with this. We don't need to manipulate state at all uh, in the case of what we're doing. So we're just returning our entire array uh, to our state to use. Then finally, we need to jump down to our main page component and we'll call kind of what I kind of consider the constructor of the component. It is the piece that will let you execute code before the rest of the component is run. And this is component will mount function. And we're just simply going to call the this.props.alltodos, which is a dispatch that is attached to our props like everything else. And it, it, this is what's gonna populate our state so that when the rest of the component is done, it actually goes ahead and loads in the data. 
So with that, we're actually ready to do something with it. So if we'll just jump into our console and do a build, we'll see that it fails. Uh, cannot resolve module dunk. Let's go into our code. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, miss import us. So we do import thunk from Redux thunk, not just thunk. Kind of had a moment there. So if we'll uh, rebuild that, you'll see it succeeds, and then we'll jump into our browser, refresh the page, and there we go. We have all of our to dos from our API loaded in. If we add something, you can see it added it to state. Uh, why did it add it to state? Well, because when we call our API, we loaded those to-do items into our state, and in our application here, we're technically adding it to state, and it's adding it to the state of our browser. If we refresh the page, then you see that that top line is gone because we didn't actually edit a to-do in the uh, back end with our API. For that, we'll finish that part up in our next video, which will be our final in our series of going from absolutely nothing uh, about React to a fully functioning Django and React app using Redux and Django REST framework. So with that, I hope you join me for the last video uh, on our next video. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.